the first thing we need to say is we want to make marriage difficult for people to enter into. Um, the idea that you fall in love and therefore that's sufficient to get married is just uh, a deep uh, um, bedevilment that um, as Christians isn't, um, isn't sufficient at all. For people to be married and have their marriage witnessed by the church, we need to know how that marriage is going to build up the holiness of the community. So you may not be terribly attracted to one another, but if we think, you know, I mean, I'm all for arranged marriages. I mean, that's what, I mean, people forget that for centuries Christians married one, married one another and they would have sex that night even though they didn't know one another. They never met one another until the day of the wedding. Uh, and yet, Christians thought they could have sex because the community would hold them to promises they made when they didn't know what they were doing. And so marriage isn't determined by love, but by a sense of faithfulness to one another and the community such that over a lifetime we're able to look back on the relationship and call it love. So faithfulness becomes the defining mark of Christian uh, commitment to, uh, to one another in marriage. Marriage is the lifelong commitment that offers um, a witness to the same kind of faithfulness of Christ to his church that has as part of its commitment the hospitality to new life that can result from um, the sexual relations. And that is the sticking point I have toward gay marriage. Not every marriage between a man and a woman is necessarily procreative, but marriage as an institution of the Church of Jesus Christ, I think is um, only intelligible in terms of the Christian willingness to have a child.